Hi there, Perfecto De Castro here, and welcome to this episode of Ask Perf. On the last episode, I enjoyed answering uh, those questions, but in case you haven't seen it yet, click right here uh, to go watch that video. So I received a whole bunch of interesting new questions, and uh, without further ado, we are going to dive right into them. So the first one was posted to my Facebook page, and it is from Zedric Lloyd Tenorio. Um, his question is, Maestro, what pedals did you use for your lead tones during the River Maya days? And do you also use any compressor pedals? I'll answer the compressor pedal question first, which is a, a, a really funny anecdote. When I was first starting out, I've probably just been playing electric guitar for a couple of months, and I ma finally managed to save up enough money to buy um, a pedal. So I went to uh, the music store, JB Music in uh, Makati, uh, and I was looking at all the selection of boss pedals. Um, I really wanted the uh, digital metalizer, but sadly my money wasn't enough. And I saw this blue pedal, uh, the Boss CS3 compression sustainer, and gears started turning in my head, and it's like, oh, comp sustain, I have so much sustain, I can play lead tones with it. <laughs> so I bought the pedal, and when I got home, I plugged it in, and to my dismay, the sound didn't change. <laughs> Chalk it up to being a noob at the time, so. Anyway, um, nowadays I don't usually, actually I don't have any compressor pedals. I don't use compression because my playing is very dynamic. I roll down the volume. I, I, I play with uh, hard picking, soft picking and all that. And usually I find compressors um, take all of that away. Um, so I'd, I'd rather not use one uh, when I'm playing live. Um, in the studio though, I, I use a little bit of compression on vocals um, or, or some guitars to tighten things up. But um, as a general rule, I don't use compressors. Now, as for the other pedals that I use during the River Maya days, um, I went through a lot actually. Uh, I usually use uh, amp distortion. Um, I was able to borrow a uh, JMP1 preamp with the the dual monoblock power amp um, as a half stack, and that I used that on a couple of songs. I used that on uh, Awit ng Kabataan, I think. Yeah, Awit ng Kabataan. I also used an original Sans amp. I got one when it first came out. Um, I used that for Halik sa Araw, uh, direct to the board, and ran it through some EQ to make it sound bigger. I also used amp distortion from the Carlsboro amps that I used during that recording. Oh, and a Marshall Shredmaster pedal. Um, I used that for the uh, 214 solo, uh, running through a Carlsboro solid state amp. Now, after the recording was done uh, and we were touring, I actually found um, uh, a neat little amp, the Fender Bronco uh, Tweed amp, solid state. And I'd, I'd mic that up for during gigs uh, and have the sound ported through the, the front of house monitors um, so that I could hear it. Uh, in fact, the, the first River Maya concert at the Folk Arts Theater, I used that tiny app. It was funny. Um, on stage, you'd see uh, a Marshall half stack and then a Mesa Boogie and another Marshall and this tiny little app <laughs> on top of, on top of a, uh, a case with, with a mic sticking into it. So, but it, it sounded pretty good. And you know, I, I dug that a lot. So our next question comes from Ken John Mayer, who also uh, posted this on Facebook. Mm. The question is in Tagalog, so I will answer in Tagalog. Okay. Uh, Sir Perf, paano mo nababalanse ang pagpapractice ng electric guitar at classical guitar? Sabi kasi ni Maestro Joe, um, Maestro Jose Valdez, my teacher. Uh, nagkakaroon ng bad habit pag madalas gumagamit ng pick. Please share your idea. Salamat. Okay, Ken. Uh, tulad nung sinagot ko nung uh, previous episode ng Ask Perf, uh, hindi ko pinagsabay ang pag-aral ko ng electric at saka classical. So, nagsimula ako ng classical guitar nung matuto ako mag -gitara. And then, binitawan ko yung para mag-electric guitar. 
Okay. Then for the next four years, um, pretty much electric lang yung pinapractice ko at saka tinutugtog ko. Nung pumasok uli ako uh, sa music college para mag-aral under kay, kay Maestro Joe, um, binitawan ko yung electric para mag-focus ako sa classical. Kasi mahi- mahirap pagsabayin eh. Magkaiba sila. Um, magkaiba yung technique. At hindi necessarily complementary uh, sa umpisa. Then after nun, nung ma-establish ko na yung technique ko sa classical guitar, nadalian na akong mag-switch between electric and, and classical. Kasi uh, nandun, na yung, nandun na yung foundation nung, nung paggalaw ng mga daliri ko. Eh, depende sa gitara. Kung nag-aaral ka palang mag-classical at yun yung kailangan mo yung prioritize dahil yun yung pinag-aaralan mo sa sa college, dagdaga mo yung practice time mo sa classical guitar para ma-establish ka agad yung technique. Okay? Then later on, pwede ka na magpalit-palit. Pag graduate ka na, <laughs> gawin mo na kung ano gusto mo. <laughs> okay? Okay, the next question was posted to YouTube. It's by uh, <laughs> Erwin3036 Abel. Okay, see you again. Um, let's see, have you experienced any musical plateaus and what did you do to get past it? Well, I think everybody goes through musical ruts at several points in their career. It's so easy to get caught up doing the same thing over and over again. And usually when that happens, you get you reach a point where you're just sick of it and, and you just, you know, you don't want to deal with it anymore. That said, best way to get out of a musical rut is to explore something new, okay? Um, usually, exploring new music helps, you know. Um, just go to uh, go to YouTube or go to Spotify and just click on the suggested playlists in, in a specific genre that, that, that you like. And you might, you know, come across uh, some artists that you've never heard before, but... Uh, sound really good okay or you can go the opposite direction let's say if you've been heavily into blues rock go the other direction and listen to some progressive music or classical you know that's 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 what i did <laughs> i've been i've been dabbling in all these uh different musical genres not to master a particular genre, but to learn about it and see what I can pull from that music to apply to my own playing. Also, getting a new piece of equipment also helps a lot. You know, get a new guitar <laughs> or a new amp or a new set of strings, um, a new pedal, uh, a new pick or, or, or whatever. Get something new that will break the monotony of what you've been doing. Okay, so if you've been playing on a humbucker guitar for ever, get a single coil guitar and, and play on that, and explore, explore the instrument, explore the explore the music. I mean, that's the key word: explore and discover new things. So, and hopefully, that will get you out of your musical rut. Okay, the next question was posted to uh, YouTube by. Uh, so our next question comes from Ernst, uh, who posted this to my Facebook. Um, Perf, do you have any plans of collaborating with other local artists? Well, I've been collaborating with artists um, all my life, so um, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't anymore. If you click here, you can watch uh, a virtual jam that I put together featuring uh, Francis Reyes of The Dawn, uh, Mali Paraguay of P.O.T., uh, Chuck Isidro of Six Cycle Mind and After Image, Manuel of uh, Wolfgang and Razorback, and uh, Paco Respacuchaga on drums. Um, and it's a little fun thing that I did, okay, featuring a bunch of my friends. During my last trip to the Philippines, I also met up with a few other people, um, Glock9, and, and a couple other people who threw out the idea of a, of a collaboration. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. And if anybody else wants to collaborate, you know, you know where to find me. <laughs> I'm open. So that's it for this episode. Um, send in your questions, post them on the comments box below or post them to my different social media outlets. And, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so cheers.